Welcome to our lesson on the respiratory system. So this is the system in our body that allows for breathing to occur. In our previous lesson, we talked about the circulatory system, which allows for the transport of many things around the body, primarily oxygen and carbon dioxide. The respiratory system really allows for that to happen, so we're going to take a closer look at how it does that. So the respiratory system is the system responsible for providing oxygen needed by the body and for removing any carbon dioxide produced by our body for growth, repair, and movement. So in all of our daily functions that we're doing, we use oxygen and carbon dioxide is produced as a result of it. The respiratory system works very closely with our circulatory system, but they are two distinct systems. And let's and we're going to look at the respiratory system in a lot of detail today. The respiratory system is made up of mainly the nose, the mouth, trachea, bronchi, and lungs. We'll look at a diagram later and we can identify all of the different components. But let's look at how the respiratory system works. So within our lungs, when we breathe in, there are gases within our lungs, mainly oxygen, right? That's what we're breathing in. What happens is that oxygen gets taken up by the circulatory system. And the part of the circulatory system that carries the oxygen is the red blood cells. And that oxygen is carried to different parts of our body, all of which require oxygen. So if it's your muscles, those, that oxygen is used for the movement. And as a result of it, carbon dioxide is produced. So that carbon dioxide, again, in the, the same exact way, gets taken in our bloods and gets taken back into our lungs. And when we breathe out, what we're breathing out is now carbon dioxide. So it's a very intricate process of when we're breathing in, all of this oxygen gets transferred into our lungs and that oxygen gets transferred through the bloodstream all throughout our body and carbon dioxide is taken back out in the same way back into our lungs and then we breathe it out so that's why when we breathe out we're breathing out carbon dioxide so this is the diagram that we're going to be that we're going to be using for the respiratory system let's take a look at the different components of it so we have our nasal cavity we have our mouth, we have the trachea, we have bronchi, then the lungs. And within our lungs itself, we have the bronchioles. And if you zoom in a little bit further, we have alveoli. And alveoli is where the gas exchange occurs. So that movement of that oxygen from our lungs into the bloodstream, and the movement of carbon dioxide from our, from our blood into our lungs happens in the alveoli. So as I mentioned earlier, the respiratory system is necessary for us to take in oxygen and to breathe out carbon dioxide. It consists of the mouth, the nose, the pharynx, trachea, bronchi, all of which are interacting with the air around us, right? So it's all th it's through all of these processes that or these components that air is transferred into our bodies. So the main purpose of the respiratory system is gas exchange. And within our diagram, we notice bronchioles. And if you zoom in a little bit further into the bronchioles, we have the alveoli. And that's what you have there. A more closely detailed picture will show you that there are the alveoli here, so that's the inside part of it. And lining it, we have a blood vessel. Specifically, it's a capillary. If you remember back from our circulatory system lesson, the capillary is when our arteries and our veins connect together. So within these, or within the alveoli, if you take a look at an alveoli, there are two parts that I want you to focus on. So one is inside of the alveoli, right there, so anything that's that beige color. And then we've got inside of our capillary, so our blood itself. So inside of our alveoli, we've got lots of oxygen and very low carbon dioxide. 
Now, if you think about why that's the case, if you breathe in, when we're breathing in oxygen, all of that oxygen is stored in our lungs and that's where our alveoli is. Inside of our capillary, our blood has now just gone to different parts of our body, brought back all of this carbon dioxide. So there, it's going to be, there's going to be lots of carbon dioxide and very little oxygen within our capillary. So what's going to happen is that the oxygen, there's a lot of oxygen inside of the alveoli, it's going to move from the alveoli into the bloodstream. And the really high carbon dioxide in that blood is going to move back into the alveoli. Now that this alveoli is full of carbon dioxide, when we breathe out, that's why we're getting rid of carbon dioxide. Of course, this entire movement of oxygen and carbon dioxide occurs through the process of diffusion, right? So there's lots of oxygen in here, so area of high concentration, and it's moving to an area of low concentration. Carbon dioxide area of high concentration in the bloodstream moving to an area of low concentration in the alveoli. So again, diffusion is how gas exchange occurs. Just to recap, diffusion is when particles move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So how breathing as a whole works involves the movement of all of the different components of the respiratory system, right? So in this diagram here, we've got our lungs, we've got um, our mouth, all of these different parts there. So when you're inhaling air, the reason why we're able to breathe in air and that air is able to move to our lungs is because the pressure, so this P stands for pressure, the pressure of the air in the atmosphere is greater than the pressure in our lungs. And because there's that difference in pressure from the outside to the inside, the air moves from the outside into our lungs. And that's how we breathe in. That's how we inhale. Now, the opposite is true when we have to exhale. The pressure in our lungs is greater than our pressure in the atmosphere, which means that the air is going to be moving from our lungs into the outside. Now that change in pressure is because of how our rib cage and our lungs are able to expand and contract. So when it's expanding, there is way more pressure on the outside in the atmosphere than inside our lungs. And the opposite is true when you're breathing out. So inhaling and exhaling occur because of a difference in pressure. Okay, there are a few diseases of the respiratory system that I want to draw some attention to. So one is tuberculosis, which is a respiratory a disease of the respiratory system that's caused by a bacteria. There's lung cancer caused by carcinogens. There's also SARS, which is caused by a virus. Another disease that we can talk about when it comes to respiratory system is, of course, coronavirus. Um, again, much like SARS, it's caused by a virus, so not a bacteria, a virus. But it does have a lot of symptoms that have to do with the respiratory system, and it really affects breathing, shortness of breath, all of those things as well. So that was our lesson on the respiratory system. The section in the textbook that I want you to read is 3.4, and then you've got questions 1 and 3 on page 95 as well. Okay, bye!